Happy Sabbath. Uh, we're headed up in the woods to worship and uh, just thankful for another peaceful Sabbath that we have here. And uh, we're just giving you a little chance to see part of the journey to where we're going to worship up the hill. We made it up the hill. Uh, let's, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful that you've given us a, a, a quiet day in nature this Sabbath. Thank you that it's not raining and we can be out in the woods here. We ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to speak to each one of us here and also to those that are going to be watching later on YouTube. Please, Father, cover this ground, this place, and our hearts with the blood. And we ask that Satan and his evil angels would be bound, that the minds, that our minds would not be distracted, but that we could focus on the lessons that you want us to teach. Father, I ask that you will send the Holy Spirit to be the teacher. I am not the teacher. You are the teacher. And let me just be your assistant to assist you in teaching uh, what you would want to be taught today. And I ask this in the name of your Son, Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. So I have two... Uh, this one is uh, finished, and this one obviously is not. So let's observe something about this. Uh, what is the difference between this one and this one? It's like one's in and then one's out. It's like the uh, the wraparound, you know. Oh, okay. Know how to describe okay, so the direction of the way that it's held, the direction of the uh, spiral. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, good observation. Uh, we're basically just wanting to observe some differences about these two. Uh, what are what would be another difference? One has the bark on it, and one doesn't. Okay. Uh, what would be another difference? One is taller. Okay. One is greater length than the other. All right. Uh, there is uh, another difference. One has a handle, and then one doesn't. Okay, good, yeah. Um, One's finished, the other one is unfinished. Okay, yes, good Good uh, observation. There's another observation that I, that I think is significant. It's been touched on, but it's a significant difference. Color? Color, yes, definitely. Uh, color is different. Uh, we're observing more and more about these two sticks. Uh, Another observation that a different, a major difference between one or the other. The finish has been put on to preserve it. Okay. Yes. That's a very good observation. I hadn't thought about that. Yes, that is significant. We will go back to that at a later time. Uh, can, okay, let me make it easier to, to get the um, answer that I'm looking for. Uh, so, what is the difference in texture between these two? One is soft and one is more rough. Okay, so we have a smooth one and we have a rough one. So uh, w in order to make a rough piece of wood smooth, what do we need to do? Sand it. Okay, uh, but before we sand it, there's another step. Remove the bark. Okay, and how would we remove the bark? I wouldn't know, um, by, by shaving it with a knife. Okay, you could shave it with a knife. Boil it in water. Okay, you could boil it with water. Um, and, uh, okay, that's significant. So in order for something that's rough to become smooth, we could cut it or we could boil it. So, yes. So if you were a walking stick, would you rather be a uh, beautiful smooth walking stick or a rough one? I'd rather be a live one. Oh, but <laughs> that's it. That, but see, that's impossible. In order to be, cut off. in order to be a walking stick, it has to be dead, cut off. Yeah, cut 
from the source of light. Well, there is a walking stick that isn't cut off from the source of light. Could you explain that to us? You've seen them in the woods. They're a, a creature oh. called a walking stick. Oh, okay. There, okay. There is an insect that is. Uh, it's okay. A, a walking stick. Uh, it, it looks similar to a walking stick. Yes. Uh, so, uh, in order to be a walking stick, though, that we can use that would help us in our hiking, uh, the tree has to be dead. We have to kill it, cut it off, uh, or we could find it dead. Uh, so, we 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 would. Uh, would you prefer to be a rough walking stick or a smooth one? Probably a smooth one. Smooth one. Okay. Uh, what about you? What would your decision be? If you could be a walking stick. I like the rough, I like the way. You, you like the rough one, okay. Um, so, one thing that's interesting about this one is that, uh, oh, does anyone want to guess before we look at that? Does anybody want to guess or, well, Daddy, I don't think would have to guess. He would probably know. Uh, what uh, kind of wood this would be? Any guesses? If it has, Birch? okay, Maybe. no. no. Uh, if it had leaves on it, it would make it a lot easier. Oh, for sure. Yes, Donovan got it, it's maple. Um, so this was originally growing like this. And so there, there was like a stump there and the root was going like that. And I took my hatchet and cut it out. And so then uh, I thought that uh, one day I'll take my knife and my saw and I'll, I'll uh, cut it down and make it smooth. Now, why does this have a spiral in it? it perhaps something was wrapped, a vine wrapped around it? Yes, yes, that's a good observation. Uh, you're right, Donovan. So uh, this was growing, and then a honeysuckle vine was growing around it and constricting it. Now, a honeysuckle vine can potentially kill this maple tree. Uh, it, it, it can be so vigorous and cover, cover the, it up with so much foliage that potentially it can kill it. Uh, most of the time, it does not kill it. But if, if the honeysuckle grows up and covers it enough, it can kill it. Um, it can't really choke it off. Um, it, this doesn't really actually harm the tree to be constricted like this. Um, but it, it, potentially, the, there, it can be covered with so much of the... Uh, competition yes, the too much competition for the sunlight. Uh, and you may have seen like the kudzu growing, and kudzu kills a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. uh, it just grows so vigorously, it can grow like uh, 18 inches a day if you have enough sunshine and, and rain. Um, so, as we're observing these uh, pieces of wood that our Creator has created and that man has shaped and cut, what are some lessons that we could learn that would apply to our lives? That um, in order to be beautiful and smooth and be useful and, and something that God wants, you know, you kind of have to be cut up and boiled. And, you know, it, it takes it. Sometimes it, it's a little painful, you know, you would think. Yes, that's to that's be shaped into what you need to be. Yes. Yeah. That's right. The wood had feelings that would cry out. Yeah. Yes. Um, <clears throat> want to repeat that? The wood had feelings that would cry out. Yes. Yes. Mm. Beauty comes from challenges. Yes. Yes. So we may come go through an extreme trial in our life, and we may think. This trial is going to kill me. Doesn't it kind of look like a snake there? 
You know, mm -hmm. we, we may have such extreme trials in our life that we may think it's gonna, this trial is going to kill me. And, you know, there, potentially the, the honeysuckle vine could kill the tree. But this tree was able to grow and thrive, even with that honeysuckle growing on it. And so because of the vine constricting this tree, this little tree, something beautiful forms. So those who have gone through extreme trials in their life, Either that trial will kill you and you will doubt, you'll doubt your creator. You'll doubt his goodness. You'll doubt your father in heaven and that trial can kill you. You can give up in depression or through the trial you learn to trust your heavenly father and then your life becomes more beautiful mm -hmm. than it would have been had you had no trial. As we're thinking along this line of thought, do any Bible verses come to mind that would underscore this truth that we are learning? Um, is that we are to be refined like gold, isn't that? Yes. And where would that be found? Do you have a reference for that? I do not off the top of my head. All I right. could probably find it. Okay. Let's try to do it from memory. Okay. Uh, if we have to Google it. Um, so... I've learned this new song. Oh, give me a zone where there is no cell phones <laughs> and the service is way out of range. But I have a PDA. <laughs> I can look it up in my PDA. <laughs> uh, where the only tweet heard is the song of a bird and the internet is down all day. So if we can, let's re use our memory so that... I believe it's in Isaiah, but I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, if we can, let's just rely on our memories and open our Bibles. And we can, when we open our Bibles, pray that the Holy Spirit would guide our hand to open to the right spot. You said the Holy Spirit can lead which place it opens up to. And mine opened up to Hebrews 10, verse 24 and 5 and says... And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Yes. All right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for sharing that scripture. Mm. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Peter. Well, there's first and second Peter. Okay, this is 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 7. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Tried with fire. So in order to take the bark off here, we could put it in boiling water. And then eventually we could strip this off and it would be very smooth. What trials are you going through in your life? Do you feel like the heat is being turned up? As the heat of the trial is turning up and you feel this extreme heat, you have two options. You can decide, my Father in heaven will be with me in this trial and I will trust him. Remember Job, he said, yea, though he slay me, yet I will still trust him. You can stand like Job, believing, choosing to believe 
that in your trial, in the heat of your trial, that God, your Father, has a purpose. Your Father in heaven has a purpose in allowing you to go through the trial. Or you can be like Job's wife and say, curse God and die. When people say in their mind, oh, God doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about the trial that I'm in. They start giving up hope. When you give up hope and you slide into the pit of depression, your emotional state of mind affects your physical body. And then not only emotionally do you start to be sick, but physically you go down. You see, some are in the trial and in their trial they land in jail. People can go to jail unjustly for no real cause, for no real crime. There were two men in the jail. They were looking out through the bars. One looked down and saw the mud. The other looked through the bars and saw the stars. What are you going to do in the trial you go through? What are you going to do in the trial that you go through? I would prefer to be like Job. Yes, yes. Yes, may it be so. He set us an example. He lost his children. He lost his wealth. He lost the emotional support of his wife. His friends came and told him, you must have done a sin and that's why God is punishing you. Mm -hmm. So even his friends misunderstood him or they misjudged him. Uh, they did have good intentions. Uh, for them to spend four days with him, uh, they had concern for him. Yes. They spent a week with them before they even said a word. One whole week with their friends before they spoke up. Yes. So in your trial, you may have someone who tells you, oh, God is punishing you for a sin. In Job's case, that was not correct. However, some of us do bring trials upon ourselves. Some of us do bring sickness upon ourselves because of our choice to sin. There was a man named Cimbalini. And he was like a bee that had gone from flower to flower and pollinated so many hundreds of flowers. And then he came down with the STD. And he felt like there's no hope for me. And some Holdeman Mennonite missionaries came to him and they said, yes, there is hope for you. There is forgiveness for you. There is forgiveness through Yeshua, through Jesus. You can be forgiven. You can have hope. You can have healing. We can bring trials upon ourselves because of our choice to sin. If you're a young person, choose the path that Jesus, Yeshua, has laid out. To go outside of that path will only bring you pain, sickness, and sorrow. Is it possible to choose that path without a relationship with Christ first? That's a good, a good thought, yes. Um, in order to walk in the path, you have to trust the one who laid that path out. And know him. And know him. The Bible says, The grace of God that leadeth to salvation hath appeared unto every man. Where is that found? <clears throat> it's in the New Testament, I know that. <laughs> Do you know? I wish I did. 
I'm sure I can look it up. It's in the book of Titus. Okay. Oh. You should know that one, Dad. I, know that one. <laughs> I do know it. I just don't know the reference. So. <laughs> I, I would say you should know the reference. <laughs> uh, so, I'm referencing my son, <laughs> Titus. <laughs> no, you're not referencing me. You're referencing the, the counsel that, that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Titus in the Bible. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, there's a group of people in the Bible that asked Jesus what happened to you. So somehow they had a relationship with him, but they didn't know who he was. They didn't know his name. Mm -hmm. Knowing God is everything. If you do not know God, you know nothing. Well, they knew him, but they didn't know his name. Mm. They didn't know what happened to him. Okay. Um, so the verse is uh, in Titus. Um, For the grace of God, which bringeth salvation, hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly, mm. righteously, and godly in this present world. D the reference? Did you have the Yeah, reference? it's uh, Titus 2, verse 11. 2, verse 12. 11. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I remember the verse, but I don't remember the reference, so mm. thank you. <laughs> We're better together when we study God's Word. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it says, The grace of God which bringeth salvation hath appeared to how many men? All. So the native tribes that lived here before the white people ever came mm -hmm. and they didn't have a written Bible, we didn't have the King James Version Bible, we didn't have all these things. The grace of God which bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all mm -hmm. men. They, they waited for it. They knew, um, I, I've known stories of, of tribes that, that was called, you know, what, knew God and knew that some people would come to give them more information and they were waiting on that. Yes. But a lot of them were wicked, you know. Yes. Right, but they were ignorant. They were mm -hmm. ignorant. They were different. Yes. So there's a, it's interesting how here uh, there was a tribe, a Cherokee tribe, um, that they didn't, before the white people came, they kept the seventh day Sabbath. They wow. rested on the seventh day. Um, and they had, they believed that, uh, you know, the great spirit would, would come one day and they, they had some similar beliefs to what, you know, we would have as Bible believing yes. Christians that keep the Sabbath. Yes. Um, Praise God. Yes. <laughs> um, and there was, I read a story of a man in Alaska uh, and he lived in Alaska before the white people ever came. And he uh, was in one of the native tribes there and he was not accepted by most of the people in his tribe. Uh, he would, they would say, well, if you eat this berry with this kind of meat, you'll, you'll be cursed, you know? And, and so they, they had certain rules about mm. what you can eat with what. And he would just laugh at him and he would eat, <laughs> break the, you know, the combination and just yeah. eat it, you know? Superstition. Yes. Uh, and so. Uh, For them, it would make them sick. And, and that's true. If they believe it. Yeah. That's true. Um, and so, like, within the, where he was at, like, they, the, um, those that were leaders in the tribe and that, like, the witch doctor, they would, uh, the witch doctor would, like, go in, into a trance, would hold arrows and go into a trance. And then as he was in a trance, those arrows would just be, just, like, leave his hand. And then uh, later the arrows would come back with blood. And so the witch doctor would see where the herd is, what direction to go. Uh, and then he would tell the uh, people which direction to go, where they would find them. You know, that reminds me, a lot of um, popular music artists today, they say that when they perform, they go into a trance mm -hmm. as well. And they, they just go into a trance. It's like another spirit comes into them. So then after, you know, he... he this man, would, uh, the witch doctor, would receive a vision, and he would see where this herd is, and he would tell them where to go. Um, but, but this other one that was he was different than you know the the majority of the tribe. Um, he was the the great spirit told him that one day um, there will be uh, men that come that are all white, and they will have a black book, and so. Um, 
when he told his people that they, they laughed at him hmm. and um you know white people you know <laughs> um well he the, he didn't he didn't tell them the word book because they didn't have books but mm -hmm. they would have something black uh he just he didn't he use the word book it, he, he described it it would be black and it will you know be That's like you know it, he described it'll it'll have be black and then it'll be like white leaves uh and then and then it will this it, then they will talk from it and so he described the Bible, um, and so then he died before any white people ever came. Um, he so, was a prophet. Yes, he was a prophet. That's true. Um, and there were some prophecies that that and it was since they didn't have books, they they orally passed down. Mm -hmm. And so uh, later, the elders were like, "Okay, wow, you know, it, they could see that there was fulfillment of it." Mm -hmm. um, and so. Um, there is a verse in Zechariah, um, and I don't remember the reference right now, um, but it speaks of, a, a, it says, you know, what are these um, wounds in your hands? So um, there are people mm -hmm. in other countries that never had a Bible uh, and the grace of God that brings salvation did appear to them, mm -hmm. but they did not understand the story of our Jesus, Yeshua. They did not understand that. And so then when they get to heaven, they will see, they will see Yeshua. They will wow. see Jesus and they will ask, what do these scars mean? Wow. And they will learn the story up there. Wow. Now, we are very privileged to know the story here. Yes. We are very privileged. Um, but they had a relationship with him. He knew them as his own. Mm. Zechariah 13, verse 6. Okay, let's turn there in our Bibles. Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 6. <clears throat> and one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thy hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Yes. In the house of my friends. I have been blessed. Mm. Mm. Yes. You know, and it is not clearly stated that this is referring to Yeshua, but we can look at other verses that do clearly state where Jesus said, I was wounded in the house of my friends. Mm -hmm. So by comparing scripture with scripture, we can know that this refers to Jesus, to Yeshua. So I have the privilege that here and now that I can tell people, teach them the story of Jesus mm -hmm. and teach them about this from the Word of God. But there will be those that never had the opportunity. They never had the Bible. They never had a teacher. They never had someone to teach them. And then when they get to the kingdom, Jesus will have a crowd. Yes. And he will teach them. Yes. <clears throat> the next verse is the verse Jesus quoted to the disciples. The sword against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Jesus said, tonight you're all going to forsake me. Yes. And Peter said, no, Lord, I'll go to death with you. <laughs> you know, yes. not me, never, never. And Jesus says, well, tonight before the cock grows thrice, he'll deny me thrice. Yes. Yes. Hey, it's okay. So Jesus used that in reference to himself. Yes, definitely. Definitely. So when we are in the kingdom with our Heavenly Father and with Yeshua, his son, will we have any scars? No. The only one with scars will be Jesus. That's right. If we can call him scars. I, I have a couple of machete <laughs> wounds here. I, when I have a, a wound here uh, where you probably can't see it, but right there. Wow. And so it probably needed stitches, but Dad was like, well, we'll just, you know, put a board there. And, uh, you know, if you keep it straight long enough, you know, it won't pop open so much, so. I wore a board for a little bit. 
It was a very little bit. You were hard to keep in splints. So. Yes. And then uh, that was when I was like 12. And then when I was like um, a few years later, I accidentally chopped my kneecap and wow. chopped it into the bone. And then uh, I stitched it up with five stitches. And, uh, and let me tell you, when you have pain, if you don't use pharmaceuticals, you can go to your Heavenly Father and say, you know, help me, I need help. And He'll help you. Yeah. You don't have to have pharmaceuticals to suit yourself up. Um, there, there is, Yeshua is real. And when you call on Him and you don't have the pharmaceuticals of the world, you will find that He answers you. That's right. So I have wounds there um, that have now healed. So they're scars. Mm. Um, and so... We will see Yeshua, and he will have these scars. And for all eternity, we will be reminded, mm -hmm. when we see those scars, we will be reminded it was because of my sin that he has those scars. What do his scars look like in heaven? That's a good question. Uh, does someone else want to answer that question or do you want to answer your own question? Light streams out of those scars. <laughs> that's well, true. Yeah, not only that about the sin, but it's also, that's the price he paid for us. Yes. You know, that's the love. It shows the love of God for us. That's right. You know, which is much greater than any sin, you know, is mm -hmm. the love of God. Yes. Yes. How far we have fallen yes. from the standard of righteousness but we have not fallen farther than the depth of his mercy. Amen. Praise God. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. Praise Jehovah. Yes. Uh, let us turn into our Bibles to Isaiah 53, chapter 53. 53 and verse 5. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, openeth not his mouth. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. As we are looking at this passage, what would the Holy Spirit lead you to say as you're meditating on it? Praise God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Was Yeshua, the Son, obligated to come here? No. He did it by choice. That's right. Well, he promised. Yeshua, Jesus... He was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So the foundation of the world, as the foundation of the world was being laid before Adam and Eve were created, before sin, before Lucifer rebelled, before he rebelled in heaven. God already had his plan. That's yes. right. There was a plan in place. And the father said, Son, are you sure you want to pay the price? Are you sure? Love cannot be forced. 
Yes. They and free choice cannot be forced. Yes. They agreed together. They agreed together that the son would come and pay the price. All true learning requires freedom. Yes. Yes. So the father said, son, are you sure you want to go? Are you sure you're willing to be beaten, mocked, misrepresented, hung naked on a cross, and die because of separation anxiety? See, it took three, about three days at least, or a week, for someone crucified to die. But when Yeshua was hanging on that cross, and he heard those words. Well, he prayed. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, for all eternity, Yeshua had prayed to his Father and received an answer. But, that time, when he was on the cross, he prayed to his father and received no answer. The father turned his face away. How deep the father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he would give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The father turned his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sins upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Does anybody know the um does anybody know the the reference my god my god why hast thou forsaken me in psalms I think it's psalm chapter 25 if my memory serves me correctly Yes that is the most absolutely uh the most prophetic of Jesus and what he went through yes. chapter in the Bible Yes and it's interesting that he he said that as he died all those people were Jewish and they had most of the psalms memorized mm. So when he said, um, my God, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It came to their remembrance, the, mm. the Jewish people. It came to their remembrance. What have we done? Mm. We have just crucified 
our Lord, mm. you know, because it says um, ex- they would cast lots for the clothing mm. and, and all. It, it was so predicted so finely mm. that, you know, they would have they would have remembered that mm. and they would have understood what happened. Mm. Wow. Yes. Unfortunately, uh, they had a f- many of them had a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Mm. And they knew the scriptures by heart and memorized it but they didn't recognize, they didn't make any connection between what Jesus was crying out on the cross and what was written in their scriptures. Psalm 22. 22, Um, okay. 22. He says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from my words of my roaring? Um, It says, It was I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint, which would happen to you when you're being crucified. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Mm. His heart exploded Mm. when he died. Mm. Um, My strength is dried up like potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. Mm. He asked for water, you know. Mm. Um, He said, I thirst. Mm-hmm. And what did they give him? They gave him wine and vinegar. Mm. On a sponge. Which it, he refused once realizing what it was. Yes, he refused. It, it says, for dogs have compassed me, which, you know, they called uh, dogs like Roman soldiers and Gentiles were called mm. dogs. The assembly of the wicked hath enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Mm. I, imagine, imagine that coming to your remembrance. When this man that you have crucified for no reason, and he says, he he references this, and this comes to your remembrance, they pierced my hands and my feet. How could you deny that? Mm. Mm. Wow. He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted. That's exactly what they said. They quoted that in mockery, but God said it in. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. It's so clear. Yes. It's so clear. Yes. There's people out there that say, oh, the Bible's not true. Hmm. That's just a philosophy. Well, David is a historical person that can be, it's in archaeology. Yes. That can be proven from archaeology. And he wrote this, and we have manuscripts. Any rational human being looking at the evidence would understand that there is a God and his name is Yahweh, his name is Jehovah, and that he did have a son named Jesus Christ. Yes. The evidence is, is so vast that you would have to bury your head in the sand. Every great scientist was a Christian um, or, or believed in God and believed in Jesus mm. to some extent and until nowadays. But you think of Nikola Tesla, you think of um, Albert, Einstein. Albert Einstein, all of the great scientists that science reveres and that, that was so smart, it was given to them by God. Somebody asked Albert Einstein, what was the greatest invention of all? <laughs> he said, uh, a blade of grass. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what? He's like, well, without the grass, there would be no roots to hold in the topsoil. And then we would have mudslides and our topsoil would wash away. And then we couldn't grow our food. And then we wouldn't be able to eat. And then we couldn't be able to think and plan our inventions. So he didn't, and at that time, he didn't explicitly state. But he was giving glory to God because people expected that he would say, well, this invention or that invention or my inventions (laughs) that I have invented, but no. He recognized and he pointed out the fact that no human being had invented a blade of grass. Wow. Praise God. (laughs) There was a, uh, uh, he was, his name was George Washington Carver. Mm -hmm. And so he, during the time where the slaves were emancipated, um, they were supposed to be given, each one of them was supposed to be given 40 acres and a mule. And so there was a lot of small form farmers that were really struggling and, and just not making it, trying to raise cotton and corn and tobacco. And so he uh, wanted to help his people. Uh, and so he would study different uh, 
plants and then uh, so he studied the peanut mm -hmm. and so as he was studying he prayed and he said um, father in heaven would you please show me the mystery of the universe and he heard the holy spirit speaking to him and saying no uh booker that is too great for you uh <laughs> I will give you a peanut that is more your size. And so he studied peanuts and he found out that, oh, okay, well, um, the cotton, the corn, the tobacco is robbing the soil of nutrients, is taking out all the nitrogen. And so if I can encourage my people to plant peanuts and then develop a market to sell those peanuts, then the nitrogen can go back in the soil and the soil can be regenerated in a natural way. Uh, without chemical fertilizers or, you know, um, there's, there's like chili and nitrates. It's, it's a natural nitrate that comes out of a mine, but you have to mine it out and you have to ship it. Mm -hmm. But the, you plant the peanuts and it puts the nitrogen in the soil. Uh, and then it, it, the, the cotton and the corn pulls lots of nitrogen out of the soil. And the peanut has a way to take nitrogen out of the air and fix it in its roots and put it in the, into the soil. Um, and so he helped hundreds and thousands of farmers who were struggling and failing and because of his studies and his teachings farmers were starting to make it farmers were starting to have food mm -hmm. things were starting to change but he asked his creator he was a scientist and an inventor and he asked his creator and his creator told him study the peanut you know, we have the textbooks now that explain to us what the peanut does, you know, but at his time, they didn't have so much of that knowledge or those textbooks. God gave him that. So, uh, yes. So, okay, let's go back to you know, kind of the train of thought we were before. Um, why did the father turn his face away from his only beloved son? Because he was separated from his son because the sin was on him. And, yes. And God cannot coexist with sin. That's right. So sin will always separate you from the source of life. Amen. Sin will always separate you. And Jesus took responsibility. If I had to pay the price for my sins, I would be destroyed by the fire That's the only way that I can pay. The death is the only way that I can. If you want to be responsible for your own sins, that's the only recourse, death. That's right. Mm -hmm. it, in or, you know, the, the penalty that I justly deserve is death. That's the only thing that I deserve. I'm a criminal according to the kingdom of Christ. I'm a criminal. I have broken his laws. And I deserve, according to his laws, to die. And so Jesus, Yeshua, said, no. I want to die in Titus's place. I want to die in their place. And let me tell you, when you really understand this, and you're really, really grateful for what Yeshua has done for you, you start to lose your craving for sin. And you're so grateful for what he has done that you start to lose your desire for sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you'll still have desire for sin, you know, but you have this overwhelming gratitude, mm -hmm. this overwhelming joy. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that the sin that had such a hold on you starts to get loose. The, the hold that it used to have, it, it, the hold start, sin yeah. starts to lose its grip on you when you are so grateful. Sin has no meaning yes. or purpose. So, let's, before, we're going to wrap this up soon. Let's uh, look at this. Uh, so, we were in Isaiah chapter 53. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. What is the difference between transgressions and iniquities? Iniquity is lawlessness, correct? It, it, 
Yes. Um, well, what is the definition of sin? According to God's word, first, first John chapter three, verse four, first John chapter three, verse four says that sin is the transgression of the law. So that's the definition of sin. Sin is the transgression of the law. So what is transgression? Sin. Okay. So let, let's kind of understand, let's, let's try to understand the concept of transgression. Mm -hmm. uh, we understand the, the concept of trespassing, right? Mm -hmm. So you have this boundary, you can go down the road and, all day long. But if you cross this boundary into your neighbor's property, you are doing what? Trespassing. Transgressing the law. Yes, you're trespassing. You're transgressing the law. So the concept of tr transgression is the concept of trespassing. So we have the commandment that says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's a boundary. You step over that boundary and you have sinned. Um, we have the commandment, um, which one is the, which is the sixth commandment out of the ten? Um, don't kill. Yeah, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. So that is a boundary, taking human life. Thou shalt not covet. So that would be a mental boundary that we should make. Mm -hmm. um, so we have these boundaries, uh, like we have thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. That's a boundary that we can choose to cross. And if we choose to cross that boundary, we have stolen, we have sinned. So I believe we're coming to a better understanding of what transgression is. There's a, there's a certain boundary in the Word of God and when we choose to step over that, we take the action of stepping over that boundary, then we have sinned, we have transgressed. So what is the difference between iniquity and transgression? Iniquity is transgression. There is a significant difference between the two, although they are, you can't have one without the other. So when a man lusts in his heart for a woman that he's not married to, mm -hmm. he is committing iniquity. That is iniquity. You cannot have transgression without first committing iniquity. Iniquity is where you're thinking, oh, I would love to get in bed with her. I would love to have her. I would love, and you're thinking about it and you are intending to do it if you get the opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's iniquity. Transgression is where you have the opportunity and you actually do it. You take the physical action. That is the difference between iniquity and transgression. So whether you have iniquity in your heart or whether you have transgression, either one will, is destructive. Either one is destructive. That's why, that's why we have to have a change of nature, a that's change right. of heart. That's, right. that's why we must be born again. Iniquity is transgression in the heart. Iniquity is is yes. It's it's doing it in your mind. It's it's it's, yeah. it, but it's not a physical action. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the pretext. Right. Then. So it would be impossible to transgress without first committing iniquity. Mm. And so man's laws only deal with transgression. They only judge you, you know, you could intend to be a terrorist and blow something up, but they can't judge you on your intentions because they don't know your intentions. They can't read your mind. Mm -hmm. um, they can only judge your actions. But your Father in Heaven knows your heart. He knows your mind. Right. And so our Heavenly Father can give us freedom, not only from transgression, but also mm -hmm. iniquity. You can also be tempted, and that's not sin. 
That's correct. Mm -hmm. It's holding on to the temptation. It's entertaining the temptation Mm -hmm. and indulging. That's a good point. Thank you for thank you for bringing that up, Daddy. Um, What would the difference be between iniquity and temptation? Yeah, temptation is is the devil's always going to try to tempt you and, and try to you know, get you to do something. But as soon as you hold on to it and you set in your mind, okay, you know, it's like, say somebody um, has a problem with smoking marijuana or smoking cigarettes and they've just quit, you know, and they've quit and they've been quitting for a while or whatever. And then they, the devil tempts them. You should go to the gas station and, and go, wouldn't that be nice? And he's tempting you and you say, no, Get behind me, Satan. And you, and you rely on the promises. God has broken me free from that sin. He has broken those chains. And, and But as soon as you hold on to that and say, you know what? That would be nice. You know, nobody would know. I could, I could go and do that, you know. Then it becomes sin. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so if you're, if you're a man and you're thinking about a woman, you're like, oh, I'd love to be in bed with her. Oh, and you're thinking that. You're meditating on it. It, it may flash in your mind, mm-hmm. and that's a temptation. Yes. That the temptation is not sin, but when you allow that thought to grow in your mind, yes. and then you're you're thinking, oh, and you just allow that thought, you give that thought a home in your heart. Yes. yes. When you allow that sinful thought to a home in your heart, then it becomes iniquity. It's the perfect way to put it. And then, as that that sinful thought, that selfish thought, has a home in your heart. Yes. It grows stronger, and then eventually Satan will seek to arrange circumstances to make it easy mm-hmm. for you to do what you had premeditated. Yes. And then it becomes an action. And w- so there's lust, and when it conceives, it brings forth what? Sin. No. Oh. The, there's, a, there's, a, there's a verse that says that when lust has conceived, it says when lust has conceived, it brings forth, the Bible says death oh, in death. the book of James. Okay. Ultimately, yes. yes. So in the book of James, it says when lust has, dis- has conceived, it brings forth death. Mm-hmm. So there, there is a progression of events that take place. Mm-hmm. You cannot control if a bird flies over your head. That's like temptation. Satan will flash thoughts into your mind. Yes. Don't feel guilty when you're tempted. Mm. But when... Thankful you can go to your father who will give you control of the temptation. Yes. Mm. So, and power to overcome it. So we cannot control the bird that flies over our head. That's like the temptation. We'll always be tempted. Satan will always flash th- ideas and thoughts and imaginations into our mind. But can we prevent the bird from making, making a nest in our hair? Yes. So let's not allow these evil birds to make a nest on our head. Mm-hmm. So if, if, if we will give Christ, Yeshua, if we will surrender to him the thoughts that we know are wrong, then our actions will be pure. I, I don't know the Bible verse, but there's a verse that says, hold every thought into captivity. Yes. Um, yes, that is... Let's let's turn there. That's in Corinthians. But just a personal little uh, testimony, really quick, is uh, I've noticed when I, when I was a baby Christian, and even even recently, I noticed that the most effective way to fight the devil is to just be aware that it is the devil, that it is not you. When those thoughts come, when those feelings come, when you realize that that is not me, Don't that is Satan. Yes, and being aware of that. It's like, I would tell, you know, an alcoholic, I want to stop drinking. We'll just start being aware because Satan likes to put us in an unconscious state to where we just, we want to drown out the voice of God. But if we're aware and we observe ourselves and say, you know, as you're pulling up to the gas station, what am I about to do? Mm -hmm. You know, as you're going in there, am I? What, what am I doing right now? Mm-hmm. You know, and just, just being aware of your actions, it gives you more power to resist the devil. That's right. Thank you, brother. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 is not the verse that you referenced, mm-hmm. but it is one that um, sh- sheds some light on what we're um, studying here. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13 
There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer or allow you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. Amen. Have you heard people say, the devil made me do it? Yes. People say that. Yes, people believe it. But it's not true. Mm -hmm. The devil can't make you do anything. Within every temptation, there is a way of escape. Yes. Well, if the devil made them do it, it means they're in league with the devil. Yes. But if you're in league with Christ, the devil can't make you do anything. You, you, 2 Corinthians 10.5. You do the will of your father. You know, if your father is Satan, then you will do the will of your father, Satan. But if your father is God, you will do the will of your father, who is God. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Donovan. Yes, and thank you, sister, for um, referencing that one for us. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Casting down imaginations Amen. and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. Yes. So you have this thought that, oh, I would like to get some alcohol and have a good time. Yes party with the girls have the <laughs> have the rock music do you have this thought in your mind that is an imagination mm -hmm. in your mind you create a reality in your head and then you go and do that reality it, that's how sin usually works it's like you sit there and you imagine yourself smoking you imagine yourself having sex mm -hmm. and then you bring it into fruition yes so you imagination you have this imagination and it is a high thing yes it, it this imagination is higher than your desire to live a pure life. It's almost like a prophecy from Satan. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like a, a it's like a prophecy. vision from Satan. Yeah. You have this imagination, this thought, and the Bible says we can cast it down. Amen. Cast down the thought. So when that thought comes to you, you say, in the strength that God gives you, you say, no, I'm not going to think about that. Mm -hmm. I am a child of God. I am a son of God. And I don't need that kind of pleasure to give me fulfillment. Amen. I have something better. I have found something better in Jesus Christ, Yeshua. I have something. I don't even need that. And so you put that thought away. You cast that thought down. You, thought, you cast down that imagination. Because, and as you cast it down in the strength that Yeshua gives you, then he gives you the mind of Christ. He gives you a new mind. He gives you a new heart. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So the same mind that was in Christ Jesus be in me. can be in me too. Amen. Yeah. And that's what we need. Amen. If the thoughts are right, the words will be right. If the thoughts are right, the actions will be right. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Yes. If the eye be single, the whole body would be Yes. The body follows the brain. Yes. The brain of the horse thinks about, oh, there's some green grass over there. His brain <laughs> is thinking about the green grass, and then he sees the green grass, and then his body follows the brain. Mm -hmm. What direction is your brain going? Mm -hmm. You can control what you think. That is a God-given ability. Now, some have gone so far in sin that they become demon possessed mm -hmm. and they cannot control. And in that case, the devil does make them do it. Yes. But praise God, if you are demon possessed, you don't have to stay that way. Amen. For those who are demon possessed, there is a great deliverer. His name is Jesus Christ, Yeshua. And he will deliver you when you cry out to him. Yes. And I've seen it happen and I've experienced it myself. Yes. And, <laughs> yes. yes. All right. Well, any other thoughts before we close? I just, I just want to praise Yahweh for this and, and Yeshua for this wonderful study. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Study. Yes. I yes. really enjoyed it. Often our victory is gained by giving thanks for the victory God that's has right. given us. Yes, yes, that's right. Absolutely. Yes. So if you're um, a slave to some kind of sin today, um, don't despair thank him before you receive the victory thank him for it 
thank Him for it. The Bible says, Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you are asking to be delivered from some kind of sin that's controlling your life, you are, you are asking for something that is within your Father's will to give you. So if you're asking to be a, a famous millionaire and that is the goal of your life and that is your request to your Father in Heaven, He'll probably say, my son or my daughter, that is not best for you. And the answer will be no. But if you're struggling in sin and you want to be delivered and you want to be set free and you want to live a holy life, you want to live a pure life, if you're asking God, set me free from this sinful addiction, you're asking for something that is within His will for you. And He says, yes, my son, yes, my daughter, you have asked for something that is best for you, and I will grant it. God has given you things far more value than millions of dollars. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yes. What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Amen. All right. What is eternity worth? Everything. How much is eternal life worth? How much can you build it? with an eternity beyond. God makes you of infinite value if you serve Him. He's promising an infinite life. We are valued. Yeshua would have come to die if there would have been only one person on the planet. He would have gone through it in order to redeem one. So your Father values you the same as He values his only begotten Son. Amen. When you recognize your value in His sight, it changes your perspective. Any other thoughts before we close? It also gives you meaning and purpose for your life. Yes. All right. Sounds good. Let us uh, maybe sing a song and then we'll pray. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. All right, let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, we many times have allowed these imaginations to exalt themselves in our mind. And many times we have fallen into sin. Many times we've been down in the mud, down in the pit. We thank you that you sent your only son, that we don't have to stay there. Teach us, Father, how to yield up these imaginations, how to cast them out of our mind so that we can truly live pure, live holy, in a way that pleases you. We ask that you would bless each one here and those that will join us later on YouTube. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua. In his name we ask, amen. amen.